cosmonology, then it becomes very easy to uh, develop consciousness of these finer emotions, these higher emotional states. And especially when we get direct consciousness of Krishna, well, then everything becomes obvious. Uh, it's just like the sun rises in the morning and everything get, becomes light. Ah, you can see everything. Yeah. So when Krishna arises in the heart, in any of his forms, then everything becomes clear. All these subjects that appear so obscure and esoteric are suddenly just a matter of everyday experience. Uh, this is self-realization. This is, this is transcendental consciousness or Krishna consciousness. Srila Rupa Goswami mourns in this connection for persons who are in the fire of false renunciation, the dry speculative habit, and who neglect devotional service. Persons who are attached to the ritualistic ceremonies recommended in the Vedas and to the impersonal Brahman cannot relish the transcendental pleasure of devotional service. Sri Rupa Goswami advises, therefore, that devotees who have already tasted the nectar of devotion be very careful to protect devotional service from such dry speculators, formal ritualistic elevationists, and impersonal salvationists. Yeah, what's well, a bunch of two-dollar words and a couple of five-dollar words? <laughs> But uh, then he goes on and clarifies that devotees should protect their valuable jewel of spiritual love from the clutches of thieves and burglars. In other words, a pure devotee should not describe devotional service and its different analytical aspects to dry speculators and false renouncers. What is false renounce, renunciation? Monkey, right. Right, right. Experience the thought. Yeah. Did the micro tell us about it? <laughs> well, I just wanted to comment that we did experience that a lot recently. There's so many fall downs, and the devotees they just uh, they take uh, they take um, initiation, but uh, very whimsically, superficially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they they have no idea what the meaning behind it is, mm -hmm. behind the initiation, and uh, basically uh, because it's so whimsically and superfic superficial, uh, and without the deeper meaning of it, they just glide down, fall down, and uh, that's just yeah. mon they, monkey they renunciation. Yeah, yeah. So they think Markata vairagya. Markita Vairagya, that uh, the uh, renunciation, which is only external, is not real renunciation. Why? Because it's unsteady. There's no more water in that bottle? No. Oh. So a uh, person who dry, re dry renunciation means uh, a me making a mental effort. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to stop smoking. Huh? Like Mark Twain said, Sm stopping smoking is easy. I've done it hundreds of times. <laughs> because the uh, desire for intoxication is still there in the heart or in the body. Uh, so you may make a mental determination, I'm going to give this up. But then after a few days, there's some pressure from the senses or from the mind, from the habit of smoking. And then an opportunity comes and immediately again, it takes it up. Uh, so you can quit like this, uh, hunt, like Mark Twain joking, he uh, said uh, hundreds of times but the habit will still remain. Uh, so real renunciation means when one comes to the transcendental platform of consciousness, and then in that consciousness, these mundane things become unattractive. 
they lose their flavor. Uh, they, they, you, can't, you can't eat even the most delicious meal if you have no appetite. You see? So if you have no appetite for material things, even if there's some opportunity, or uh, even if the body, out of habit, is saying, oh, we should indulge in this material thing, you have no taste for it. Uh, so how is this possible? It's only possible when we have a better taste, uh, a higher taste. For example, uh, we go by every day, we go by so many restaurants where people are eating meat. And uh, we smell the, you know, they, they, uh, they arrange the exhaust so that it that deliberately puts the smell of meat up in the air. So people with senses will be attracted. But when we go by, we're disgusted. Ugh, meat, ugh. Huh? We don't like the smell of meat. It's not attractive to us. In fact, it's disgusting. It smells like decaying carcasses, which is exactly what it is. Uh, like there, there was a joke, a, a woman was standing at the butcher, butcher counter and uh, pointing at a, at a piece of meat and saying, uh, I think this, this, uh, this piece of meat is expired. <laughs> and the butcher, without even turning around and looking at her, he says, yeah, lady, it was expired the minute it got here. <laughs> in other words <laughs> well it's a double meaning on expired you know but uh, it's just it's just a decaying piece of flesh it's ugly it's horrible it's it's ghastly huh so how could anyone in their right mind be attracted to such a thing it's, it's so horrible you know and then killing and the, and the cruelty to the animals uh, if you know what goes into modern uh, animal farming, uh, you know, wh if you ever watched that cartoon, The Matrix, huh? there's an animated cartoon called The Matrix. We studied it when we were making that Matrix video. Huh? And it's really funny, you know, you have, a, you have a bull with sunglasses on, you know, and he's like, he's the like, uh, yeah, no, no, the, uh, who's the guy? Morpheus, oh. yeah. Morpheus, and then you have this chicken who's like Neo, you know, <laughs> and he's talking, or a pig or something, I forget. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, they're talking about how, you know, the factory farms, all the animals are crowded together in filthy conditions, and they're full of diseases, and they're all shot up with antibiotics to, just to keep them from just, just dying on the spot, you know, uh, and oh, so many disgusting things. Yeah. Anyway, but we're not attracted to this. Uh, we have no attraction at all. Uh, why? Because we know the nice taste of prashadam, and especially the taste of ghee. Uh, the taste of ghee is uh, actually the same taste that attracts people to meat. Uh, it's the blood of the cow. But it's the blood of the cow transformed into a substance that's in the mode of goodness. See? Whereas meat is in the mode of ignorance, because killing is involved, violence is involved, economic exploitation, and so on and so forth. So we have no taste for things in the mode of ignorance or the mode of passion. Everybody in the world thinks the mode of passion is very wonderful. In fact, when people say, that's good, what they usually mean is, that's passionate. Huh? It appeals to my senses. See? I get sense enjoyment by pursuing this thing. This is good. No, it's not good. It's passionate. <laughs> and the mode of passion leads to suffering. So if you're suffering, you can understand that you have indulged in the mode of passion. Very simple. If you're happy, you can understand that you, your activities are in the mode of goodness. And if you, don't un if you can't understand what the heck we're talking about, you're in the mode of ignorance. <laughs> so it just about covers everybody, except the few people who are in transcendental consciousness. See, The rituals of the Vedas 
are meant to engage the mode of passion in sacrifices leading gradually to the mode of goodness. But the result of the mode of goodness is the attainment of heavenly planets. It's still within the material world and does not give eternal transcendental existence. That only comes from cultivation of devotional service, which is on the transcendental platform. The people don't understand these subtle distinctions. And because of this, they get uh, distracted. Now, uh, Rupa Goswami calls them uh, dry speculators. Uh, the dry speculators are the people who are talking about spiritual things without any experience, without any real knowledge. Mm -hmm. Formal ritualistic elevationists are the people who follow 